Welcome back you beautiful people to another week of van life in winter in Scotland. This week you join us as we explore the highlands of Scotland and finally make it across to the incredible Isle of Skye. What an adventure. If you are new around here then here is a quick catch up about just who the heck these two poorly dressed and clueless to boot motorhome dwellers really are. We moved into our home on wheels back in July 21 after spending the last four years abroad backpacking through Asia, pruning olive trees in Australia and living and working on the small island of Guernsey. Since then, we have spent the last seven months touring our beautiful home country of Scotland in our eldest AutoQuest 155 named Ellie, exploring all of the sites that we have missed so much over the last few years and trying to find the best hidden spots across scony old Botland. You join us as we finally make it to the wet and wild Isle of Skye on Scotland's western coast, just in time for the apparent storm season of the year, as not one, but two storms batter the appropriately named Misty Isle. Do we manage to explore the beauty of Skye and spite of the weather? Does our washing machine survive the storm or do we find ourselves waking up in the land of Oz? Well, it certainly was an adventure to remember as you join us for another week of van life in Scotland. And so we've just arrived back at Achmelvik Bay up in the North Coast 500 and if you guys remember the last time we were here, this beach is famous for its crystal clear water, white sands, blue skies and I think last time we were here there was even a little bit of rainbow. This time however, not so much. It's absolutely miserable. Welcome to winter on the North Coast 500. Wow, yes, <laughs> so miserable. Nevertheless, we have driven across the country to come back to this beach for a good swim because we love it and we know that you guys love it. So are we ready? We are. Let's do this. Three, two, one, go! Woo! Woo! Oh, two, one! Shit. Yes, baby! Look at you! That does feel amazing though. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> How are you feeling after that? Really, really good actually. Do you know, I always know that it's going to make me feel better because it always does. But I don't know, I couldn't really pinpoint it. But I was just feeling like really anxious this morning and I don't, I just don't know why. But I knew that that was going to make me feel better and I feel on top of the world. I feel like they can achieve anything now. Yeah, it was so worth it. And home sweet home, once again, the van is an absolute mess. Just how we like it. That's what we're used to. It's been so nice for just chilling out the past couple of days though, because now I'm very excited for the next adventure. So we're heading south. But first, before we go anywhere, it's time to head back into Loch Inver, top up our water and empty our toilet because it's full again. So it's just down beside the harbour at the Loch Inver Leisure Centre. And you go into there, basically pay five pound at reception. I think it was five pounds, and uh, they give you a key, and you can go and unlock it. They've also got drinking water and grey waste disposal here, so it's fantastic. All right, so while we're waiting, I'll just give you a quick rundown of what we're actually got planned. Now we're finally on our way to the Isle of Skye, and the last time we were there was about three years ago when it was blowing, as usual, an absolute hooli. And we had planned on actually camping on the island, so instead we just had to sleep in the car in the town of Portree. So that seems to be a kind of recurring theme with our trips to Skye. I'm hoping that it calms down a little bit more this time we can actually get out and explore, but we just need to actually get onto the island first because I know for a fact that the bridge is closed today, so we won't be able to get over tonight. Hopefully we can do it tomorrow instead. I think I might have just done something worse than Gemma. Okay, so I've got all the water containers full. That's not a good start to the trip. <sighs> if you guys will remember back to Glencoe, which was a couple of weeks ago now, Gemma went and dropped the sliding cap that sits on top of the toilet cassette, down the one beside the Glencoe Mountain Resort. And I've just gone and dropped the actual screw cap, which turns out to be a lot more critical in keeping a water container uh, watertight, so. Can I just say, we've had the van now for like seven, eight months and not done this. And in the past two weeks, we've both done it. I know. Like, how? I don't know how. I think Thetford are actually gonna be rubbing their hands together with us because we're their number one customers for January, it would seem. And I don't even know if the, really the mic is picking it up that much, but it is blowing a hoolie. It is absolutely insane. Like we are 
possibly about 45 minutes to the west east of Kyle of Lachalsh. We're on our way there just now, just to kind of park up there, camp overnight, and then drive across the bridge onto Sky oh. when it opens up. But it's just, it's just getting worse. Mm -hmm. It's getting worse and worse and worse. And I can see it becoming like that situation we found ourselves up in Tongue when the van was literally rocking all night long and I can't be bothered with that. It's just, just so frustrating. I just want to get to Sky. It's literally been weeks. We've been talking about getting there and it's just been pushing off and pushing off. So we will get there. We will get there. Cross your fingers for us. We will get there sometime. Just I hope it's in the next couple of days. So we've just arrived and I'm not gonna lie, this is a bit of a bizarre car park. There's like two abandoned cars that look like they're like stuck into the ground. An abandoned building with like windows and all that blown out it. And some pallets bit bizarre but it looks like a sheltered car park so we're gonna stick with it and hunker down here I guess this is just the joys of traveling around Scotland in the middle of the winter is uh, you arrive in the dark and you leave in the dark very much so I mean that's always our plan anyway but I mean it would be nice to actually show you what the park up spot looks like in a bit more daylight but We've got places to be. We're heading across the bridge this morning, all the way up to Portree, because, fingers crossed, it is looking like it's going to be a good day. back on Sky again, it's just reminding me just how absolutely wild it is, it's insane. I forget just how remote an actual island it is compared to the kind of size of the towns and villages and stuff like that, there is literally just nothing but road. And that is why we have zero signal. Yeah, zero signal, zero. And I guess that's just my favourite part about having a motorhome is literally there was no hope whatsoever from looking up at the mountain. We waited for 15 minutes, jumped in the back, had a little bit of a coffee and the sky's cleared and it is looking gorgeous again. Are you excited to see the old man? Buzzing. Love this walk. Love the view from the top. Sun's come out. It better stay that way. Oh, and it's happening Gemma. I can see him. It's happening! It's clear! You know that way when you book a holiday somewhere and you just almost like wish it away because you're like hoping that the weather's going to be good? I feel like that. I'm like I just want to get there. Honestly I thought this day would never ever come. Coming to Sky in January and actually seeing some blue skies. Baby, good job. And I don't even know if you can hear me over the wind up here, but that right there is exactly why we've come up and braved the elements today, because it is stunning. Absolutely incredible. What a beautiful country we live in, man. So grateful. Oh, and we've just learned a valuable lesson on the way back down as well, what's happened. Don't just assume that when it's winter, you don't have to pay for parking because then you'll have to pay more. We got distracted by that window and just ran. Completely forgot. We've now got a 30 pound lesson. So, yeah. why are we such idiots? Well, the good news is the rain has come on, so it seems like we got back to the van just in time. And as we were driving past, I saw that they actually have a new like chemical disposal point and toilet block that they've built just beside the old man store car park. So I don't really mind paying a £30 fine if it's going to go towards things like this. Like, I guess it's kind of worth it. Yeah, we are the most charitable people in the world. We've got our National Trust membership. <laughs> We're throwing out £30 donations left, right and centre. If you're from the Highland Council and you're watching this, you're welcome. It looks like our weather window might have passed now and it actually looks like the sun's going to set soon, it's getting kind of, kind of dull. So we're going to head into Portree and find a cute cafe, we've got one in mind that we really like and 
see if we can sit in there and just chill out and get some work done this evening. Okay, so we're parking up in the big car park in Portree. Keep coming. And this car park has been like massively extended since the last time we were here. They've got a huge big bit along here and they've actually got a chemical waste disposal point as well, which is really good to see. It is paid parking now and you actually have to pay to park your motorhome over there and you can't stay overnight. But there's four or five bays here that are for camper van or motorhome only and you can stay overnight in these ones apparently according to park for night and there's nothing to say on these that you can't so that's really good to know we're going to pay for 24 hours park here overnight i think campbell said it was like a fiver so it's not really um too bad at all actually to be honest it's very cheap and it means that we can also if we choose to spend some time in the cafes tomorrow working then we can stay here um and park we've paid to park here for tomorrow as well which is good Honestly guys, I'm concerned about my health sometimes. We basically got about halfway to the cafe and Gemma turns around to me and says, did you pay for a ticket? No, I didn't pay for a ticket. Even though we were literally just saying to each other, oh well, 30 pound, lesson learned, won't do that again. We almost immediately did it again. So Gemma's run away back to the car to pay for a ticket. I'm gonna bring you guys along and show you one of the most picturesque spots on the entire island. And that is of course, Look at little colourful buildings along Portree Harbour. Especially when you come in a night like tonight, it's just so calm and so peaceful. And it's just beautiful, man. Really nice little spot. Really nice. Alright, so what's the chat? Can we get a ticket? <laughs> so I've come back to look at the tickets and according to Park for Night, someone managed to park for 24 hours for £5. But according to this, that's not the case. There's a 12 hour maximum stay, 3 hours £3, 6 hours £4, 12 hours £5. We were hoping to come back here tomorrow to work in the cafes as well, which means that we're possibly going to need to leave here tonight, I'd say, so we're not like well overstaying our welcome if we end up working through here tomorrow as well. So I'm thinking we pay for three. Yeah. She's always such a gutter. I feel like I would be more likely to spend more time and therefore more money in a place if it was just free parking. So we found a little park up at Kilt Falls Viewpoint, which is a perfect little spot to come to during the day actually. The rock looks a bit like a kilt and the colours from the sea and everything makes it kind of look like a sort of tartan. And then you've got the Melt Falls that's like crashing down the rock into the sea and it's really really beautiful waterfall so highly recommend coming here in the day Campbell's just up there cooking something really delicious for dinner let's kick in nothing exciting to be honest I feel like we literally just had this the other day but we're going to be having another pad thai awesome. it is it delicious is Don't we absolutely wrong. love it we absolutely love it and hence why we're having it again for like the second time in about three weeks but but it's one of those like things yeah. you know that you just buys like a staple in the cupboard for when you need it and it's always tempting when you're starving <laughs> and we just decided that tonight was one of those nights after yeah. a hike up the one of the like yeah let's just have a wee pad time i'm exhausted man Same. i'm exhausted a lot of fresh air a lot of wind very yeah. tiring I lots know. of excuses here going on but <laughs> we just want pad thai okay yeah we're gonna chill out have this and then uh, catch up in a little bit of work. There's some signal if you're wanting to come here for your own park up. I've got Vodafone and there's like three bars 4G here. Gemma's with three and she's got zero. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna chill out tonight then. So we'll catch you guys up in the morning for hopefully another good adventure filled day. Oh, I don't know why this keeps happening to us. Um, I'm getting major flashbacks to when we were in the storm up on Tongue in Scotland and yeah it's about 5 a.m. now we did actually manage to sleep through the night despite being woken up at midnight by the van being tossed around like a washing machine but I think it's time that we move on you will be proud of us though we did tough it out Gemma I didn't sleep much at all you were saying but I got a couple of hours sleep we're gonna go and find a place we can shelter down in poor tree uh, try and wait out this wind because apparently it's only to get worse today it's just not good it's not good man. <laughs> So good morning, uh, it's, as you can see calmed down a lot since last night, we've actually come back to the Portree Harbour and yeah, I'm guessing a lull has passed through and we've finally managed to get a couple of hours kip before the sun rises. But it's just so, so peaceful at this point, like uh, Portree is just such a cute little town, to be honest I do like it. Breathe.
So I reckon this is going to be an interesting experience because the last time we actually did this I was in a tiny little uh, Vauxhall Corsa, not in a big washing machine um, <laughs> and it's very similar to the Bilak Naba Pass on, Apple, uh, on your way to Apple Cross. so wish us luck. Is this like the locals trying to warn us not to go any further? <laughs> Okay, so here we go. We're going up that. Oh my goodness. Wow. I actually forgot how steep and dramatic this is. Like, in my head, I can just remember like parking up there and kind of like going for a walk, but yeah, actually, the, yeah. the drive up is very dramatic. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay, well the only problem I can see here is that reading this signpost that actually says restrictions upon use, parking of vehicles manufactured for the adapted purpose of sleeping. So I don't even know if you're allowed to park motorhomes here at all. And also someone's ripped the height barrier off. I don't know if someone's driven into that. Or if that has just been like a fight the power type deal. But yeah, means that we get to park here so I'm not complaining. I mean, it's just the landscape in this part of Scotland is unbelievable. It's like nowhere else in the world that I can think of. And it's just completely breathtaking. Look at that. How incredible is that? It's good to see that they've put a path in here though, because it's obviously a very popular place to come for a walk. The last time we were here, it was just like boggy mud and so slippy. I actually remember people falling around in the mud and everything. It was crazy. And there's also a drop off the cliff down onto the road just there. So if you do come here, you need to be like super careful, you don't get too close. But as Gemma said, it was just literally bog land before with no real edge in sight. So they're doing a lot of improvement work on it. Oh, but it is definitely not getting any warmer because I cannot feel my fingers after flying that drone. <laughs> We've just made it in in time and as well. Pain and the rain's just starting yeah. as well, exactly. I feel like maybe this storm is gonna be hitting us soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe we do want to actually get off the top of this mountain. So <laughs> yes. let's go down, check out Uig Harbour and try and seek some refuge there. Well, that was where I was hoping to grab a coffee. Because I remember the last time we came here, the Isla Sky Brewing did a really nice coffee, a really nice cafe, and it would mean I could pick up some beers as well. But unfortunately, it looks shut. It's just like the story of everything here in Sky in winter, especially on a Sunday, which is today. Yeah. But yeah, uh, it's just nothing's open. Oh well, at least we got our exercise in for the day. I feel like it might just be a case of batting him back down in Portree again. I think so as well. Wait out this storm that's coming. Yeah. Literally just as I suspected. I went over to get a ticket just to pay for the day and make sure we're not going to get another parking fine. And if I pressed the button two more times yesterday, we would have realised that it's actually 24 hour parking not just 12 hours so we could have stayed here last night so there we go this video is just full of lessons for ourselves and hopefully for you guys so that you don't make the same stupid mistakes that we did and have to drive half an hour at 5 a.m in the middle of a stormy night just to try and find refuge so you can stay in portree guys don't listen to us earlier what are we honestly like honestly like ugh, you learn from these things so but it's just 
never straightforward, is it? No, it's never. We did learn from it because we didn't get a parking fine. Whoop, whoop. High five for that. <laughs> Only one parking fine per video. We'll try and keep it to that limit. I think that's a good kind of goal to set for 2022. But yeah, honestly, I hope this video has been enlightening and refreshing. Hopefully the weather clears up. It's not looking like it today. Um, so that's why I'm just going to round this video off here. And we'll see you guys next week for more Sky Adventures. We do have somewhere very, very exciting that we're very much looking forward to it's going to be another little taste of luxury for us but that's for next week in the meantime guys if you like this video hit the like button down below and why not join the highlands the hammocks gang hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys again in the next one see ya.